Hey everybody, welcome back to Vampire. Sorry we didn't have any episodes yesterday. I was- if any of you know about my obsession with Dota, uh, there was a big tournament and I was up all night and up early morning, and then we did some E3 streaming. We're back, and uh, we have to go and tell Swansea about Razvan Vasily's blood. So let's do that, shall we? Are you guys enjoying Vampire? I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. I'm, uh... I go back and forth on the game, you know? Like, I've always talked about how a ga I can tell I really like a game when I'm thinking about it, when I'm not playing it. And Vampire hasn't really hit that chord for me, but when I am playing it, there's interesting things that are happening, kind of? <laughs> it's really- it's a, such a weird... Uh, it's such a weird experience. Because I want to just be, like, obsessed with it. It's just like... I don't know. Wait, where is he? Oh. <laughs> Evening, Edgar. Could I get your professional opinion? Please speak, but I have something important to tell you. Okay. This strain of flu, it's very different from the one I saw in Europe. It's downright peculiar. Really? What makes you say that? Um... Well, I analyzed the blood. I've just looked at the blood of one of our recently deceased. I see. Do you have anything more to go on? This disease spreads and looks like the Spanish flu, but its effects differ greatly. The London strain is different from the continental one. This is very interesting. Did you find something else? Uh... Hmm, so is this about, like, whether or not we trust this guy? I guess so. Yes. Unlike the flu, the infected begin to show an increase in outwardly aggressive behavior. More than simple agitation. Once docile people become violent. You mean like rabies? Is there a chance we could create a vaccine, Jonathan, like Pasteur? By the stove, that would be smashing. There's a lot we're not seeing see right not. but it is spreading, and quickly. Minus the whole vampire If we don't thing. act, the whole city could be lost. But Jonathan, we've a fantastic opportunity sitting right here in front of us. A weapon of choice. What on earth do you mean? Why you, my dear boy? With your expertise and your blood, we could isolate the properties that course through your veins. Think about the possibilities. Could also backfire, yeah. Like... Hmm. But the risk of infection using vampire blood could compound the situation. I know, but your blood now carries remarkable regenerative properties. Yeah, but you'd have With to make sure that you're only isolating blood, that aspect. There's nothing we couldn't cure. We'll discuss this more later. Thank you for your time. No, thank you, Jonathan. But, as I said, I needed to talk to you. Okay. I have some rather bad news. Yes? I'm afraid it's your sister. My sister? She's to be buried this evening at Whitechapel Cemetery. Your mother published the, the obituary from the beginning this we... morning. I see. Sank I'm teeth sorry, into. Jonathan. Please accept my condolences. The guilt. Attend Mary's funeral. Okay. Interesting. So, I think there's a couple of things that we should be um, considering here. Number one, there's some contracts, uh, I, 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 or investigations, I should say. Um, we have this one here. This is about Dr. Tippett's concerning the death of Samuel Connor. I'm not quite convinced right now. Perhaps I should conduct my own investigation, determine the patient's real cause of death, and then maybe confront Tippett's, which could lead to perhaps um, deciding whether or not we consume him. <laughs> so maybe let's start there, and then we can take a look at the missing ingredients one. Dr. Thoreau Strickland's a young and daring physician who's fascinated by the science of medical advance. He's presently conducting some experiments on his own, but he's waiting for some products to be he recently ordered. He suspects the present shortage may have incited his supplier to sell the batch to a more eminent doctor than him, and that's why he asked me to go there and use my reputation to obtain the needed supplies. Um, so maybe reaching that pharmacy as well. Uh, but for now, let's track this one. 
And instead of going to the cemetery for this moment, we're going to, uh... We're gonna see about finding out the real cause of death. I believe this is the body that we found in the morgue? Um, so likely we're heading back there. I never thought I would have to attend my murdered sister's funeral. Mary. It's- it's kind of a weird... It's an uncomfortable situation, to say the least. Uh, because she was technically murdered by us. Okay, so this should be open now. Let's be careful here. Got him. Oh, we got one behind us. Hello. Now, I keep going back and forth on whether or not I like the, like, being able to stun or, like, just constantly be getting blood. The thing is now, um, because of some of the upgrades that we did to our weapons, we're actually drawing blood with this. Uh, so if we look over here, uh, we're doing, uh, blood absorption. And then increased blood absorption on the, on the third level. And... I think that means that we could probably go for, like, a stun on the offhand. We also have, like, new weapons. We have this barge, barbed cudgel that we picked up that does stun. Um, maybe we throw that into our offhand situation here. And that could be our two-handed. And then... Or I shouldn't say offhand. You know what I mean. Uh, we put this here so we have a stun. We also could have ranged. Maybe that's a good setup. There's a lot of different ways we could do this, but we can kind of keep experimenting until we find something that we really like. Oh wow, that's actually tons of damage. I can see the benefit. Oh, we got a bunch here. Hello. Oh, this one's actually pretty nice. It gives us some good options. Lots of damage and the stun. Wait, what? The hell is that? That's a hard pass. Okay. I kind of feel like I need to take out whatever's in this room first. Jeez. This is one I don't use enough. This whole oh, he resisted that. Okay. Where we like hold them in place? I think too when we were fighting that mob a while back, uh, would have been good. I'm not sure if the bosses would resist that, but. Definitely something we have to remember that we have in our back pocket. Alright, let's see what's going on here. Open chest, damaged legs and arms. The chest was originally open to perform the operation. 
The sutures are clean, but the chest has been reopened. Reopened, okay. Traces of a pinkish foam at the corner of the lips. Some sort of drug overdose, perhaps? Multiple abrasions and scarring on the arms and legs. Old and distinctive injuries of a sailor or a fisherman. Oh, I was going to think maybe like a struggle, but... A puncture over the left lung. Possibly a chest tube insertion. Not the cleanest work, but I think it was successful. Hmm. Signs of internal bleeding. So... Dr. Tippett's anesthetics were incorrectly dosed, causing the patient's death. And then he tried to operate on him again. Tippett what? has made an egregious error. Tippett. It's time we talked. We got the vibe that he was sketchy, but... Hey, so hold on. Corcoran Tippett, he thinks that uh, Gwyneth Brannigan's overqualified. Exhausting himself, refuses to stop working, but it's probably causing him to make errors, costing Mr. Connor his life. Brannigan, don't know much about her. Interesting. Tippett's, time to chat, buddy. Tippett has made... All right, let's interrogate him. Interrogate Gwyneth Brannigan about milk error. Maybe we should talk to her first, if possible. Because we could probably get, like, real info, you know? Frick, those screeches down here, man. So we know that he was... I mean, he lied on his medical reports. That's obviously a huge red flag, number one. Now we know why, because he screwed up, which is kind of obvious, makes sense, as to why he would try to cover it up. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Always trying, my man. Always trying. But I wonder... Goodbye, Milton. Why is this taking us to him, exactly? Doesn't that seem a bit strange? Is it just that they happen to be out in this area? I don't think so. Harriet Jones. Hippa Hawkins. What is what does she look like? Gwyneth Brannigan. Hampton. We do need to talk to that woman. Harvey Fittick, Mortimer Goswick, Beatrice Goswick. Let's just talk to him. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been oh, informed is, okay. about your arrival. Ackroyd. I'm Waverly Ackroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Ackroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Okay there, buddy. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. 
Of course, you can't say the same about me. No, I cannot. Since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Sounds jealous more than anything. Yeah, exactly. Aren't you too old for such jealousy? It really won't do to you any good. mesmerize him right now Don't on the spot. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Reed. A simple glance is enough for me to know you have nothing for me to envy. Jesus. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Hmm. This approves modern medicine methods. What? And Fiddick, he's the guy that's getting advice from like two different people, right? Yeah, his wife died during the war, blamed himself for his injury. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Obviously. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Hmm. Other people may say that's too conservative a point of view. Conservative? And what are you going to say to Mr. Fiddick if he loses his arm because of the operation? Because that's what's going to happen if the surgery is a failure. Yeah, but that wouldn't depend on the method used. Both methods could fail. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Mm. That's doubtful. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. I don't know what you've heard about me. But I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Ackroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. Savage. Knowledge has always been and will remain our main weapon, and it has always come at a price. And personal initiative. It is not a question of initiative, it is a question of integrity. These men and women have put their faith in us, Dr. Reed. Okay, so we know a little bit about him now. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Um, but the real question here is, are we going to eat him? <laughs> That's really all I'm thinking about. Okay. But in the circumstances, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. This seems to be leading us to Milton, and I can't figure out I will not let you down, my why. Boy. What is it that I'm missing? It's not you. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. This is good old Pippa. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. The darkest thoughts in your heart. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's a vampire here. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to Alma. me. Mortal. Oh, she's like outwardly vampire? Blown by the winds of eternity. 
I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency. Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. I don't know about that. Do you require my services, Miss Howcroft? I have no need for your medicine, Dr. Reed. Blood is the only drug I need. Like, would she be acting? Like, what is... And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Yeah, I don't know if I'm buying it. What's Cotard syndrome? I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome? Cotard. Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, stop. Is affected by Cotard syndrome believes she's a vampire. Okay. I think this is an eater. She's looking tasty. Sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. Yeah, I'm not buying it. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howcroft? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. Oh, I'm sure a you woman, could. A, a spirit, fog, or bat. Mm-hmm. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you. To care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Okay. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them. For you are no match for those that hunt me. Mm -hmm. Okay, new investigation for her. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm yeah, curious sure. to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? All right, we'll I'll come back you, to you. Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Okay, where is... Where are Brannigan and Tippets? Simpletons, these nurses. Bred with no respect. I wonder if she would have any info. Oh, I can't. For some reason, I can't talk to her. Oh. Hello. If only there were more of us. Less yeah, here we go. And more determination. I know I can count on them. Good evening, Nurse Brennan. They were probably Good out here the whole doctor. time. I didn't. Maybe I missed them. Tell me. We're what gonna ask Dr. her. Tippett's ask did. her right in front of the guy. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Doctor Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. Yeah, I and. Not let that happen. You can't allow your emo- So she willingly covered it up. Tippett thinks that she's overqualified, but she covered up his thing. These guys are obviously in some type of cahoots. Oceans to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannock. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in Is he our that brilliant? situation? To clear Dr. Tippett's name must be the decision of Dr. Swansea. You can't take matters into your own hands. I respect Dr. Swansea's authority and management, but he's no idea what happens here on a daily basis. 
I did what I had to do. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Okay. Goodbye, nurse. Call Let's me ask him now. Assistance. The patients are not fools. They know we are overwhelmed by this horrifying epidemic. Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Not totally. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. I get souls. that he's probably doing it for we the right the reasons. We are the last rampart before chaos. But if you're making mistakes... Once more unto the breach. ...that cause people their life? Nurse Brannigan is worried about you, Doctor. <laughs> she should not have told you that. <laughs> I will have a word with her. You don't have to blame her for her honesty. <laughs> I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Brannigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. Hmm. I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. So, okay. Who was he first Who of was all? This patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks. Maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed a body. Okay, so that lines up with what we know. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong. And the administered dosage was too strong. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. Why did I you have cover saved it up? so many lives since then? Okay. Ooh. So, do I have to take that option? I will cover for you, Dr. Tibbetts. By keeping what happened so. to Mr. Connor to myself. I... I don't know what to say, actually. I can't exactly force you to become my accomplice. You didn't force me. This is my decision to make. I believe you're still of use to the hospital, considering mm. the situation. Then I can make you this promise. As soon as the epidemic is eradicated, I will resign. Interesting. Oh, and he paid us, too. That's dirty. Poor Tippets. He's a viable candidate for blood. Very viable candidate. This is interesting to me. What is this last one? It, it sounds bad, but like he's he's old. He's overworked. He's making errors or killing people. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's in it for him. What will you do after your resignation? Do you have a plan? I always fancied visiting Cyprus. Such a beautiful island. I could buy a house there, by the sea. Read poetry, and wait for death. Yikes. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Huh. Well... I kind of feel that, like... <laughs> I'm, gonna ha I'm gonna have to eat somebody. I'm just saying. It's gonna have to happen. She's too strong. Like, for si This is interesting to me, right? So she's got a mesmerized level of five. He's got a mesmerized level of two. And... To me, that's like an indication that she's slightly more important for the long term. Um, there's things here that we don't know about her still, and there's things here that we don't know about him still. It's kind of interesting. Okay. So, here's what we'll do. Let's, um, let's head for the cemetery. Is it, uh, can we go through the back? Thelma Howcroft said she was being watched by vampire hunters. Where are they hiding? Yeah, great question. I should investigate. Nice little study. 
Blackwall Faubourg. So is this a, a different place altogether as well? So the docks, the hospital, Whitechapel. I think this is just... Yeah, this is just a section within, like, the hospital area. New dialogue available. I guess we could talk about, um... Um... What we just learned with covering up that death, maybe? Even though we said we were going to cover for him. <laughs> Pest control? I guess we've eaten a bunch of rats. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. And these guys are going to throw down for sure. guys. This thing's actually pretty powerful. If I hit him. That's the key. Gotta hit them. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. This guy's this one of the big boys right here. Damn it! Cemetery. Best be moving on. He's on to us. Whoops. We are pretty strong, and this club is actually exceptional. Okay, to the cemetery. My dear sister, I don't know if I have the strength. We have to discreetly attend the funeral. Okay, let's take a break here, and then we come back, we will uh, attend the funeral.